guys, welcome to another video. So what we're going to do today is break down the dress codes that we see in Friends, which is the supporting text for those of you who are doing sitcom for component two, section A. We don't have any shout outs today, but I'll tell you at the end of the episode how you can get one if you would like one. So let's get started. So Monica is the first character that we're going to have a look at here. I've tried to make sure that all of the pictures are from the pilot episode, um, but because that was quite a long time ago, some of the images are going to be a little bit blurry, um, so I apologise for that. When we first see Monica though, as we do here, we can see that she's got braces on her trousers, which sort of puts her into a more boyish character, and this gives her sort of more of a dominant personality, which is then followed throughout the series, obviously because she's made slightly more masculine here than we would expect. She also wears neutral colours, we can see this through the sort of cream jacket that she's wearing in this image, and this makes her seem more grounded, more down to earth, she's not as ostentatious as Phoebe, she's not as overly feminine as Rachel, she's not as depressed and dark as her brother Ross, so this makes her seem sort of more normal and more grounded, and this could also support the idea that she is perhaps made a little bit more masculine within this episode, because there's nothing that makes her overly feminine as we'll see with um, Rachel in just a second. Now her clothing, not so much here, but later on in the episode, particularly the uh, morning after she spends the night with Paul the wine guy, we see that her clothing is very, very long, quite shapeless, quite oversized, and this is something that we'll see with a lot of the characters because it was very much conventional of a 90s, 90s fashion. Now the only other time that we see Monica in something different is when we see her at work, where she's wearing a chef's uniform, and this shows her high status and again perhaps cements her as the leader of the group because she's got a high-powered job. Now, Rachel first appears wearing a wedding dress, and the wedding dress is quite ostentatious. Now, that's very conventional for 90s, but today we would look at that wedding dress and we'd think that it seemed very fussy, very overdone, and this helps to show Rachel's over-the-top, spoilt personality because she's managed to get everything that she wants. She's gone for absolutely everything on a wedding dress that she could possibly have. Now later when we see her, when she's out of the wedding dress, she's viewed in pastels, so she wears a pink shirt. That's tied around her waist, so it cinches in at her waist, making her more feminine, emphasising how slim she is. We can also see in this image here that although she's got a jacket on, we can see a sort of lacy vest or camisole underneath, which again emphasises the fact that she's very feminine. The only time that we don't see her in something feminine is when she's wearing an oversized cardigan before the characters head to bed. The fact that that's the only part of her clothing that's oversized makes her seem more innocent because it makes her seem smaller. Now when a character is seen smaller, either through the dress codes or through the camera shots, it makes them seem more vulnerable, like they need protecting. And obviously this perhaps shows a different side to Rachel's personality and helps to start her narrative of becoming a character who eventually becomes more independent and able to survive by herself and on her own. Phoebe then is first seen wearing a denim sleeveless jacket with bright patches over it and again this shows her eccentric personality. She's taken something that would um, perhaps have connotations of aggression or have connotations of particular um, types of characters such as bikers and has made it more childlike, more innocent, and obviously more eccentric. Now she wears her hair in bunches like we can see in the image here throughout the episode. This is the second time that she's seen wearing bunches here, which makes her seem more childlike and more innocent. It's not something that we would expect a 20 year old to perhaps wear. Even in the 90s, this was not considered normal. Now her dress style, as again, as we can see here in this image, seems very spiritual or hippie-like. She wears a lot of long clothing, she wears a lot of jewellery, she's got multiple rings on, as we can see in this image here, which makes her seem very unconventional. And it also adds to this idea that she's quite a spiritual person, but also very unique. She has her own style and she's quite comfortable and secure within that style that she has as well. Now Chandler has oversized relaxed clothing, which we can see in the image here, and this is also what we see him in, or something similar in right at the beginning of the episode, which suggests he has a very much laid back character. It contrasts with what we see him wearing when he's just about to go to work. So when he's about to go to work, he's in smart clothing, he's got a waistcoat on, he's got a tie, and this again contrasts not only what we've seen before, but also the way he feels about his job as well. He says that if he doesn't input those numbers, nobody's going to care, nothing's going to happen. So it sort of contrasts the way he views work. 
Now when he's helping Ross, which is where this image is from here, we can see him wearing a backwards cap, which again is very conventional for the 90s, but we'd expect children to be wearing their caps like this, or for very young adults to be wearing their um, cap like this, and so this sort of shows his joker personality as well. Ross then, as we can see here, begins the episode wearing very dark clothing. So aside from his trousers, the jacket that we see, particularly when he first arrives at the coffee shop and the lighting isn't quite as bright as it is here, is almost black. This matches his personality because he seemed to be very depressed following the fact that his wife has left him. However, when we move towards the end of the episode with um, sort of Ross and Rachel being the only two left up, his dress codes have completely changed. They're far lighter with more bright colours, more light colours, showing that perhaps there's a sense of hope here for Ross. And again, that helps to cement the idea that the Ross and Rachel relationship has been established right from the very beginning, right from this very first episode. Now, he's always dressed very formally with a shirt and trousers, so we don't really see him in jeans. Um, even So even when he's relaxing, like we see here, he's got a jacket on, he's got a shirt on, he's wearing proper trousers. So he seems more formal and this helps to make him seem more of an uptight character. Joey, on the other hand, is sexualised right from the very start of the episode. So as we can see here, when we first view Joey, he's wearing a leather jacket. This makes him seem quite en enigmatic and perhaps a little bit of a bad guy. And that character type of a bad guy is normally considered alluring. So that's quite a stereotype that we've got going on there. Later on, he's also seen wearing a sleeveless biker jacket with a giant patch on the back of it, which makes him seem like a little bit of a risk taker, but also emphasises his muscular arms. And it's emphasizing his muscles and emphasizing his sort of physique that makes him seem more sexualized and more attractive throughout the rest of the episode. The only other character to consider is Paul the Wine Guy, and I didn't know whether to include him here, but he is a minor character, so it might be worth just having a look at this. There's not a lot that we can say about him, really. When we see him, he's wearing very smart clothing, which is indicative of him going out on a date, especially because he doesn't wear a shirt, so it makes him seem a little bit more relaxed and distinguishes that idea that he's not just going to work, he's actually going out somewhere. Now, the only interesting point of this is that he's obviously wearing the same clothing the following day, which indicates, obviously, that he spent the night at Monica's, which then helps helps with that narrative. A few general points to consider as well. So the clothing um, is very dated. It shows that the episodes were very much made and set within the 1990s. The other types of clothing to consider come from the title sequence. Now, I didn't think it was worth going through all of the characters within the title sequence um, separately because the title sequence is significant in that they all wear monochromatic colours, so they're all in black and white. And this links them together, showing that they're all connected in a way and establishing the fact that they are, in fact, friends. However, despite the fact that they're all wearing black and white and they all seem to have similar clothes, they've also got individual elements about their clothes as well within that title sequence. So Ross is still wearing a jacket and a shirt showing his uptight personality, whereas Phoebe is in longer and more, again, hippie-like clothing, even within that title sequence. So you can gain a lot about the characters and their personalities just from that title sequence, and it's worthwhile having a look at that separately. In fact, if you would like me to do a breakdown of the title sequence for friends, please just pop a comment in the comments section below, and I'll add that to the list of videos that I've got ready to make for you guys. Hopefully you found that useful. There's a few key terms here which hopefully you should understand a few of now. If not, make sure you look them up, maybe make some note cards or make yourself a little glossary of your own for different media terms that we've been going through in the videos. If you haven't already, please subscribe. For every person who subscribes, they'll get a shout out at the beginning of the next video. If you have already subscribed and you haven't had a shout out, then pop a comment in the comments section below. You can also get in touch with me through social media, Twitter or Instagram. If you have any questions, comments, ideas, suggestions, let me know either in the comments section or through any of those social media. I'm also running a questionnaire at the moment for you guys to have your say on what happens with the channel and how I adapt and change it in the future. This is going to be open until the end of the weekend, so please follow the link in the description box below and you'll be able to answer those questions. It's not very long, but it would really help me out. And I will see you guys tomorrow for another video.